Change the colors, and it was a similar scene for UNC Wilmington as the Seahawks get the automatic bid out of the Colonial, knock it off Rexel by eight. Missouri Valley up next, Southern Illinois and Creighton. Let's go to St. Louis, Bob Carpenter and Jimmy Dunn. Welcome to the Sabbath Center, downtown St. Louis. Larry House has a basket early for Creighton. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues in the Missouri Valley. And there's a great follow by Brody Darren. Top two seeds got through. Southern Illinois won the regular season championship with a record of 16 and 2. Here's Brooks and Kyle Corver deflects that ball over the baseline. The lineups tonight feature some outstanding perimeter players like Kyle Corver of Creighton, the league's player of the year, second consecutive year, and Kent Williams averaging 15 a game for SIU. But Jermaine Dearman is a quick load to deal with down low as well. Up Southern Illinois with 24 wins on the year. Creighton with 28, the most in college basketball. Neither head coach would admit today, we think we're in for sure. This game means it all to him. Jermaine Dearman the miss. Kyle Korb with the rebound. Last year, Creighton beat SIU. And then SIU had to wait and wait and wait. And they finally saw their name on the board that Sunday. Boy, did they take advantage. Beating Texas Tech and Georgia at Chicago. A little bit short on that shot. Brody Darren. Here come the Salukis, and a deflection by Tyler McKinney. Dana Altman's done a wonderful job. Seven wins his first year in 95. Now he's got five consecutive years of better than 20. And they may win 30 or more this year. Bruce Weber, a longtime assistant, 19 years to Gene Cady at Purdue. And he's got them headed for their second consecutive NCAA. Uh, both clubs rely on that man-to-man -man defense. Creighton will extend their pressure to full court after made baskets. Southern Illinois pretty much stays within the half court. Deflection. Larry House got a paw on that thing. Tough Creighton defense so far. Creighton doesn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one ability in their offense. Most of their baskets come from within their offense. House is the one guy that cre can create. He forced that one. McKinney for three. And Jermaine Dearman pulls it down for Southern Illinois. He's averaging a team leading six boards a game. And Lukey's 0 for 4, only 2 out of 11 from the field collectively so far. Left-hander would not go for Josh Warren. Creighton given no second opportunities to Southern Illinois. That's where they won the ball game when they met about 10 days ago. Left-hander rattled in. Michael Lindemann and Creighton's on top by six. Dana Altman didn't think they showed up in the first half of their game yesterday against Wichita, which they eventually won 70-69. A lot more pleased with the effort in the second half then and in the opening minutes here. Ken Williams long with a three, and the Salukis are now 0 for 6. Bob Dana Altman told me yesterday his club is emotionally tired. They've had that huge target on their chest for uh, 32 ball games now. He said it's the first time for us to go through a season like this where every game is magnified. The three losses in conference all resulted in the crowd rushing the floor. He said we are a tired ball club right now from that kind of pressure. Joe Dabbert banks one in while getting fouled. Foul number one on Jermaine Dearman of SIU. They run the little pinch post, and if you cheat off of it, then it allows the post guy to just turn and get to the rim. If you're guarding the post guy on the pinch post, you better play him honestly, because Dabbert and other guys will turn that corner and go to the rim on you. Eight nothing Blue Jays. So Lukies, 0 for 6. They've missed their first two three-point attempts. Left-hander, Warren, no. Corver the rebound. Straight ahead, bounce pass, what a pass! They lead by 10. Timeout, Southern Illinois. People back in Omaha are hugging folks they don't even know right now. They're so happy with their start, huh? Creighton is not a club that gets a lot of baskets, Bob, outside of their offense. But they do get four or five a half out of transition. Those are an important four or five baskets for a club that doesn't have a lot of creativity. Their bigs like to get out and run right down the middle of the floor. A terrific pass and catch and basket for Nate Altman's squad.
Championship Week presented by 7UP continues 7 o'clock tomorrow. We'll check in on the Horizon League Championship. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Butler. And of course, Butler, one of the most talked about non-NCAA tournament teams of a year ago. Well, they're sitting there with 24 wins again this year. Uh, UW Milwaukee with 22 wins. And they'll probably in their mind playing for the whole thing as well. But again, you're talking about two other mid-majors right there on that screen that just cannot schedule people. Kyle Korver, Kent Williams. Normally, they're one and two for voting in the league's player of the year. Ken Williams, a senior from tiny Mount Vernon, Illinois. And of course, Kyle Korver left his native Iowa to play in Omaha for the great Blue Jays. Emotional leaders for their clubs they are as well. Salukis are a motion offense. The offense primarily goes through the hands of Williams and Dearman. Brad Korn into the game, number 13. Bottom year screen for SIU. Gives them a little size and shooting ability. Off the curl, Stetson Hairston. Left-hander too high. Follow won't go. Tough effort, Sylvester Willis, and he finally gets a Creighton foul drawn. First offensive rebound of the game out of the team in white, and again, that's where they did their damage in the uh, win over Creighton in the regular season. Willis is a guy that's not going to hurt you in any area of an attacking that offensive glass. Rookies are finally on the board. Kyle Corver back after a quick breather, replacing Joe Dabbert. Robin, I mean, you would think, talking about Southern Illinois, a club coming off a Sweet 16 appearance, back-to-back -back regular season conference championships. They've won 52 ball games over the last two years. They would think that they would be in, but that's not the case in the Valley. On this Monday night, Arch Madness, they play for it all in this league. Dabbert with a bank shot and a great start by the guys from Omaha. If you're filling out a bracket on Selection Sunday, the choice is ESPN. The key to outdoor advertising? Location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors. At a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power. The fast new C230 sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room, more people room, or more headroom. Enterprise. So easy, it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. How fast does Eclipse Flash freshen my breath? You want to see it again? Introducing Eclipse Flash. Ooh, finally, a breath strip that tastes good. Okay. I'll take Chris's buddy. You playing that? Why not? Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7UP and your local 7UP Bobbler. Make 7UP yours. And in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. And Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Call 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Downtown St. Louis, a tournament that has set all kind of attendance records here in the Missouri Valley Tournament, which, by the way, this league is the oldest conference west of the Mississippi. Some great traditional schools, Pop Carpenter, Jimmy Dykes, and we feel, no matter what happens tonight, really, these two are in, but nobody wants to take that chance. No, not at all. Creighton with a great ranking right now. They had a number seven RPI in their non-conference schedule, which bodes very well for them. Interesting Southern Illinois this year, Bob. Their RPI is actually better right now than it was last year when they got in that large bid, but you can't convince either coach right now of what we're talking about, I can tell you that. Nobody wants to play that waiting game. SIU, the regular season champion with a record of 16-2. And, and they brought a contingent of probably 
five to 6,000 fans from Carbondale, which is 105 miles from St. Louis. Look at that rebound by Grimes. Great, keeping it alive. Can't roll it in. Finally, Ken Williams says that's enough. Here's Turner trailing the play. And the Salukis just can't hit a shot. Good transition. Grimes kind of went running by the ball. Kyle Cooper says, I'll just pick it up and dump it in there. And that's his first basket of the night. A lot of things have been said about Kyle Cooper, but he has an awfully quick release when he gets that ball in that shooting position. He's worked on all areas of his game through his entire four years. That's one of them he's really improved. SIU turns it over. Clover running. He's such a good passer. Now McKinney swings it. The right side for Nate Funk, who made some big plays yesterday in their semifinal win. Out to Anthony Bob. What a great look for Grimes. Great execution so far by the number two seed, Creighton. What a great job by Grimes to read his defender turn his head, bobbing it right to the front of the rim where the high percentage shot's going to come from. We did not expect this. All away from the ball. Looks like a hold on DeAnthony Bowden of Creighton. That'll be his first. A lot of been said about Dana Altman's offense, but I've been impressed with their defense. We've seen them in person already this year once or twice now. We've watched them on film a couple of times. And they really lock down. They're fundamentally sound. They don't get out and gamble, but they make you show the top of them. Up over the top. Dearman, good feet from Brad Corn. Jermaine's got to make that shot. And he goes down heavily after taking contact. Looks like a foul on Creighton. Well, Dierman is the X factor in this ball game. Uh, he only averaged 14 points during the regular season, 21 so far in this tournament. The reason why he's the X factor, he's quicker, and he's got the, just the extra little oomph in his game that you don't see in this league right now. Had huge numbers last year in the NCAA tournament, 17 and 11 when they went over Texas Tech, 25 against Georgia. They call him Big Game Jermaine for that reason. And he's a little miffed at not making the first team All-Valley squad. He made the second team. How about that? He was fifth in the voting for player of the year. There's Brad Cole on the catch and shoot. Interesting guy. A 6'9 wiry junior who can stroke it from outside. You see Creighton, even after a made basket by St. Illinois, a quick push of the basketball. Tough shot. Larry House way short. Off the hands of Dearman. Bob House has to stay within the offense tonight. He's the one guy that can go a little crazy on you if you don't reel him back in as the head coach. Kyle Corver out playing a, sort of a point right now. Here's that pinch post that you have to defend. And they run a shooter off the high post. Nate Funk, a freshman out of Sioux City, Iowa. And they love the upside for this guy. He's really come through big for them this weekend. And what I like about Nate Funk as a freshman, he thinks he's a little better than he really is, but that's okay. That kid out there with a ton of confidence. Plays a lot of minutes right now for Dan Alton. Corn for three. And it'll go back the other way. Southern Illinois now. One out of 13 on the night. And Bruce Weber's team has not hit a shot beyond the arc. They're 0 for 4. They want this third that pressing 40 minutes. Five or six years ago, they regularly played 10 guys as a result. What a good pass by Corbin. Oh, the assistant coaches for Sun Hill tonight, they must have a good game. You're playing against a squad that's going to rotate 10 guys in. A new guy about every dead ball. The assistant coaches must be alert. Make sure you're assigned to the right guy. Those three guys sitting down tonight, you better have a good one because Creighton will put pressure on you for two hours. Mike Grimes, a local kid out of Hazelwood Central High School here in the St. Louis area. There are a bunch of St. Louis area kids on both sides in this championship game. Corver gets a breather. Brody Darren back for Creighton. And Mike Grimes with four off the bench now. 
SIU will bring back in Josh Warren, their starting center. Kyle Corver tonight. Just one basket. Only one shot. He does have an assist. Well, though, he's a guy that gets 18 points a ball game. He only shoots 10 times a game. He has as, a, as a, an efficient game as you'll find on the college level. I must add, he has four rebounds already as well. Here's Dearman looking to penetrate. I think Creighton will let him do that all night long. House for Grimes. Ball deflected, and we arrive at the second media timeout. All Creighton early. A lot of the reason is there's nothing for SIU. They're one for 14. Down by 14. The fast new C230 sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. Who are these guys? They're a team, experienced professionals who work in sync. This team approach is how Oppenheimer Funds delivers solid long term performance under all conditions. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Introducing the 7-Up Parade Balloon! It's gonna make people want the refreshing taste of 7-Up! And it's completely realistic! I even gave it a pull tab! Dave. Larry. How is that uh, Dell consolidation going? TCO's down. Uptown? Highly available. Great. And you? <laughs> you know, we're uh, still running a proprietary Unix based system. Right. Yeah. A Dell flexible solution with Dell PowerEdge servers and Intel Xeon processors can help manage your enterprise for less. Easy as Dell. Call or go online today. It's never about one move. It's thinking five moves ahead. Oppenheimer Funds believes financial success comes from a well thought out plan. Talk to your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. At Valparaiso, there's a new Drew in charge. Homer's son, Scott, the first year coach, but some things never change. Valpo is the top seed, headed back to the Mid-Continent Finals tomorrow night on ESPN2 as they knock out Missouri, Kansas City. That game's at Kemper Arena. Back now across the street to St. Louis after we update the Atlantic 10 first-round games. GW knocks out UMass and LaSalle advances over Fordham. Bob, Jimmy. Thank you, Chris Fowler. Thanks for keeping us up to date. Everything going on. Some bad looking Elvis impersonators in the house tonight. Jimmy, what does Bruce Weber tell his club in that huddle a moment ago when they can't hit a shot and they're down by 14 early? Well, I'd expect Jermaine Dearman to get a lot of touches here in the next two or three minutes, Bob. He's the guy that can at least get his club to the free throw shot. It's usually too quick for anybody one on one. Now. Defense, defense. They are really locked in on Corver and trailing him everywhere he goes. Brooks has him right now. So it's huge when other guys hit shots. Second of the night for Larry House. So Kyle Corver has two points, but the other Blue Jays have 18. And a lot of games this year where Kyle Corver only has two or three points at the half and comes back to get 14 or 15 in the second half. Unselfish guy that will absolutely stay within the system. Funk a deflection. 18 to shoot when the Salukis throw the ball back in. Kyle Corver, one shot, four rebounds, and assist. The Blue Jays are spreading the wealth against the top seed in this tourney right now. Won't go, Darren Brooks. And again, one and out. Combination of Creighton surrounding the uh, defensive glass and Southern Illinois not making an effort at all to get a second putback. I think it's hard to remember when they happened, but SIU does have two offensive rebounds already. For the most part, one shot and time to play defense. And we are nearly halfway through the first half. Southern Illinois has four points. 
House penetrating and finishing. Larry House with a half dozen. And Bruce Weber wants another timeout. He has a look of absolute bewilderment on his face over there. Bob, this is what I call the pinch post right there. That's the high post giving the handoff back to the guard. If you just fail a little bit to guard that correctly, you're going to give up an open shot. Right here, this is the pinch post guy. He's waiting for this guy to come around and get the handoff. Now, depending on how you defend that, if you help off of the guy uh, making the pass, then the post guy becomes a player. If you don't guard him well enough on the guy getting the ball back, then he's going to drive that ball to the middle. That's a difficult thing to stop. You don't see a lot of it in college basketball, the old pinch post play. Well, tomorrow night, the Women's College Basketball Championship games continue on ESPN2. Presented by State Farm, Villanova, and UConn in the Big East. UConn, number one, of course. Total domination in that league by the Connecticut women. By the way, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN Full Court, your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Kent Williams with penetration. Got his own rebound. Missing again. Hairston can't knock it in. Dearman finally puts it down. Well, but that points are not coming easily for Southern Illinois at all. Creighton as alert defensively as they've been by the last two or three weeks. I think Coach got their attention after their lackluster first half yesterday. Look at that. Talk about a bad start on a big night. You're watching them. Cody Guerin calls a timeout before Josh Warren forced him into a five-second situation. Well, Bob, we both feel like that these clubs are going to be in regardless, and I think it's uh, going to boil down to the common sense index. The CSI is much more important in this game than the RPI. You're looking at clubs that absolutely, when they make phone calls in the summer, hey, you want to play us, they don't even get the return phone call back. Bruce Weber told me today, I tried to call everybody in the country. He said, the only offer I got was from Oklahoma saying, yeah, come play us at our place to open the year on November 22nd. That's a, that's a Final Four team saying, okay, so no one will play you. That's the struggle these type of clubs have. A big time struggle for SIU tonight, two out of 19. Braden will throw it in. 9.36 to go, first half. Over curling, finally they find uh, D'Anthony Bowden up on top. He'll go ahead and drive it right in there. Out of control as some help defense was waiting from Josh Warren. Down to Deerman. Brody Deeren to block. Great help defense. His 54th block of the year. 6'8", and about 245, and he's quick off his feet. Watch him rotate in as the second defender. Boom, right up top. Has great timing. And then SIU turns it right over on an inbounds play underneath the basket where they're shooting. It almost looks like Bob Sutton, Illinois, playing with the, you know, we have to win this game attitude. For the catch and the shot, blocked by Darren Brooks. Normally defenders aren't quick enough to catch that release of Corpus. Lindemann for Bowden, good thing. And the mid-range jumper goes down. Eight Creighton Blue Jays have now scored. And Williams along with a three, and he's got an old for going. Josh Warren to the right. Wow, again. The Pigs of Creighton is outrunning everybody down the floor. And they run him right down the middle, Bob, so it puts a lot of pressure on you defensively. How are you going to guard this guy? You get on the right shoulder, the pass will come from the left. You get on his left shoulder, it'll come from the right. Austin Celtic started that trend a long time ago with Kevin McHale and guys running right down the middle of the floor. Josh Warren on the foul. 
Brody Darren at the line, looking for the three-point play. A junior, another Iowa kid of Harlan, Iowa, who came to Omaha. He stays in the full court and man to man press. The premier press is a 2 2 1. We haven't seen it yet. Ken Williams. There's Turner. Lots of traffic every time he penetrates. And DeAnthony Bowden may have put a body on him there. That'll be number two on the Hammond, Indiana senior. Southern Illinois would not have the season they've had without uh, Kent Williams saying, you know what? I've not been a point guard my entire life, but we need one this year. I'll slide over from the two to the one. Now he gives it up and assumes the role of the two guard once in the offense, but uh, He's the reason for this success this year. They had no point guard when the season tipped off. Mr. Williams said, Coach, I'll do it. I just want to win. I guess in that respect, he and Reese Gaines would be the best two in the country in that category. Good call. They did the same thing for Rick Patino. Two points for Kent Williams tonight. Blake Schoen for the first time, a 6'4 freshman. One of their physical rebounding defenders and scrappers. Maybe Bruce Weber feels they need a little fire in that lineup right now. The thing you like about Southern Illinois, although they're down, they've been to the Sweet 16. They know how to win games. They are a tough team. Brody Darren, interior pass. That's a travel by Mike Grimes. So after no turnovers, Creighton gives it up for the first time, and it takes them 12 minutes to do so. They're still on top, though, by 17. with the NCAA women's bracket, plus live interviews with teams around the country. At 6, Sports Center brings you the men's bracket with expert analysis plus all the sports news of the day. Then at 7, hoops as a second language. Gypsy do Dunkaroo, and you gotta have the stars, the PTPers, baby. As professors Chris Digger and Dickie V teach Bracketology 101, presented by Staples. If you're filling out a bracket on Selection Sunday, start here. Yes. With front wheel drive and available vehicle skid control, it'll help keep you on the road. Assuming you can find it. Find Lexus of Omaha. I first went, to, I Creighton. First went to, Creighton. to Creighton. I wanted to Jesuit school. With a reputation for academics. I, I got it, but I got more. They opened, they opened my, my eyes. eyes. How I could serve others using, using an amazing, amazing network, network of people. Of people. Community service. I met interesting, talented people from every state. People, people from, from 60, 60 countries. countries. My classmates, classmates became my, my doctor, doctor, my lawyer, my dentist, my, my pharmacist, pharmacist, my stockbroker, my mayor. And they're all still my, my lifelong, lifelong friends. friends. I didn't just go to Creighton. I, I joined, joined Creighton. Creighton. Should you? Visit admissions.creighton.ed. In the Sunbelt Semis, Western Kentucky playing on its home court and smacking around the two West seed, New Mexico State. Jamal Brown inside. Big lead for the Hilltoppers who will play Middle Tennessee if they hold on. Tomorrow night's championship game at this time, Southern ESPN. Okay. Thank you, Chris Fowler. Now the Blue Jays. Everybody having that blue feeling right now. One way or the other, either proud to wear blue. Or I guess I use your feeling that way because you can't make a shot. I like their transition. Look at the spacing. About 20 feet out to here, about 15 feet over to here. And this is the guy, Bob, running right down the middle of the floor. Watch it develop. They stay off of him. So you take away the help defense, Brody Darren catch, and the finish. And that is textbook transition basketball. Keep that floor spread wide. Run your big down the middle. And that was after a made basket yes. at the other end of the floor. That was not a turnover-produced fast break. 
Second part of that equation, Southern Illinois not running with a purpose from offense to defense. You better do it. Dearman travels. Three turnovers by the Salukis. Jermaine Dearman, 0 for 4. He does have four rebounds. Bruce Weber's team has eight offensive rebounds already, but you're going to do that when you miss 19 of your first 22 shots. Here's Corbin. Very much under control, the Blue Jays here. Now they're into their Johnny Orr Iowa State half-court offense that Dana Altman brought with him when he came to Creighton. Larry House improvising. Rebound Willis and House fouled him and trying to get a reach-in steal. Ed Williams back. And so is Stetson Hairston for SIU. Big crowd here in St. Louis tonight. They've completely sold out the lower bowl of the Savage Center. For the first time ever, there are fans sitting in the upper deck here. They had better than 15,000, a new record for the semifinals session yesterday. Well, every coach I've talked to has said the same thing. This is a, as good a team that Southern Illinois has this year as last year. They're different, but they're just as good. Without Roland Roberts, they lack that inside presence, but their perimeter play is better. Yeah, Roberts was the defensive player of the year last year. Playing professional basketball in Turkey right now. Under seven minutes to go. Jays by 17. Ryan's got it right back from McKinney. Little fade away. Lindemann, great rebound. At 6'6", 190, he could use a little time in the weight room. <laughs> that was a strong rebound. You know what, they're good on the offensive glass because they don't have surprise shots going up. All five guys for Creighton, they know where the shot's going to come from and when it's going to come. Sets them up to be a good offensive rebounding team. Lindemann, Lindemann just stole it away from Hairston. Gets it underneath. House, no. Who gets it? Officials looking at each other. It'll stay with Creighton over the baseline. Lindemann, there's nothing flashy about his game. Here's an example of it. Just uh, does what he's supposed to. Become an offensive board, get it up, and give it a chance. He has one turnover, Bob, in his last 220 minutes played. It's a guy that knows his role. I'll tell you why he doesn't spend more time in the weight room. He's a 3.98 academic All-American with a major in finance. There you go. Getting the job done at a great academic school in Omaha, Nebraska. 6-12 to go, 29-10. Great University. Well, tonight, Larry House hasn't seen many shots. He didn't pass on taking. That one rimmed out on him. Here's Brad Korn, and that is a charge. Joe Dabbert stopped right in front of him. Just absolutely nowhere to go for Korn. Dabbert does a great job. You see him come off the pick, just lowers his head, and boom. Dabbert keeps his feet set, pushes off on his heels. Textbook example of how to take a charge. And Joe Dabbert in 6'10", 230. Bit of a load to go charging into. He's an important guy come tournament time, Bob, because he's the biggest blue jay that Dana Altman can put on the floor. Dearman to steal. Williams has not had any open looks. Tyler McKinney all over him. Rebound Dabbert on a shot from the outside. And Southern Illinois is three for 24. Foul on Derek Brooks. Nate Funk back for Creighton. Michael Lindemann, the man you saw getting a breather. Larry House will follow him. Dana Altman loves to substitute. They'll have guys shuttling in and out 40 to 45 times a game. And that's what I talked about, that you have to uh, be on your toes if you're the opposition, because you've got to make sure you don't give up points because you have a mismatch just one time down. Dabbert rattles it in. Joe Dabbert with a half dozen off the bench. 31 to 10. Like the SIU fans, Jimmy Dykes and I are stunned right now at what we're seeing. We just thought this thing would be five points, four, three. Yeah. Seesaw back and forth all night long. 
Well, if you're Creighton, you don't let off the pedal right now because you know you're playing against a team that has experience, they've got talent, and they're going to make a charge at you at some point. Finally, Ken Williams gets his first field goal. Off the catch and shoot of the inbounds play. Four of their 12 points have been off the out of bounds. Again, the pinch post. You spread that big high post guy out. Defense makes a mistake. Burn him. Denver. And the follow. D. Anthony Bowden right on the spot. SIU bench. Thought there had been a travel there on Joe Gabbert before he let go that left-hander. Dearman from Williams. Way off. And again, Creighton will let Jermaine Dearman stand out there all night long. Corver losing it. And he takes some contact. Great poise by Kyle. As that ball just didn't want to seem to stay in his hands. And it'll be a foul on Brad Korn. Kyle Corver has made the most of his four years in college, Bob. I mean, he's a guy that uh, has just developed a certain area every summer. Pretty good player for a kid that shot left-handed up till his third grade year. Now he's a good right-handed shooter, huh? A livid Bruce Weber storming toward the official and telling him, I want a 30-second timeout. And a couple of key players shut out so far in this one. Well, tonight, Championship Week continues. Another automatic bid handed out on ESPN. Catch the West Coast Conference, number two, San Diego, and the number one seed, the Dogs of Gonzaga. Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and the Deuce. Log on to ESPN.com. We'll keep you up to date on what's going on with all the brackets. There are the West Coast brackets where... The number four seed didn't get through, but everybody else did, and the Zags are poised for another NCAA tournament run. Won't be easy playing on San Diego's home court, but uh, like Step, Noni Turioff, I love that Gonzaga squad. Bob, look at this. I've heard the argument that Creighton can't advance in the NCAA tournament because they can't rebound the basketball. That's a false impression. If you're grading this film on Selection Sunday, knowing you've got Creighton, forget about that fact because this is why. He plays a style that spreads you out so much, it allows great running lanes to the rim to get offensive rebounds, and they lock in and play such fundamentally sound defensively, they limit you to one. Other reason to back it up, they out-rebounded both Florida and Illinois in last year's NCAA tournament. Enough said. Enough was said. You got that right, partner. By the way, Kyle Korver, with those makes, has now knocked down 15 consecutive free throws. Four minutes to go, first half. 35 to 12. Grimes, who just checked in, way upstairs for the rebound. And they are doing it by committee. All five jerseys, when that ball shot, they're in motion. You don't see four guys moving and one guy standing. Sign of a well coached club. Okay, guys, we're not going to shoot beyond the arc the rest of the night. Nobody. 0 for 13 between. Them. And two of the better three point shooting clubs not in this league in the country. Yeah. Creighton comes in 39%, SIU at 40. Shot clock at five. Fuck from the corner. Looks like Kent Williams got a piece of that ball. And then for Dearman, this is where he's dangerous. You see that happen and you wonder, why hasn't it happened more? Yeah, he's too quick to defend on that low block and then just go one-on-one -on -one defense with him. He's the guy that can slowly bring them back into this ball game. Defense, defense. Defense, defense. Defense, defense. Defense, defense. Keep that offense high. The low post guy is pushing up at the mid post, which opens up for a lot of backdoor cuts and a lot of offensive rebounding opportunities. Funk leaning in, Kent Williams fouls him. That'll be two on him. Josh Warren back for Southern Illinois. He's joined by Stetson Hairston, who's been shut out so far. At the line, Nate Funk. I think Altman started the same starting lineup 50 games in a row up until senior night when he made a substitution to get all of the seniors on the floor. That's 20 games better than anyone else in the country. 
That's a team that knows their role. They know their, their style of play. They accept their role. 50 straight games with the same starting lineup. Wow. 2.41 to go, first half. It's all crazy. Doing it on the boards, doing it on the break, and just playing together beautifully with some emotion so far. Right here on ESPN. Halibut with polenta cake sounds good. Oh, but polenta sometimes makes me break out. Mm, I will get oh, a vegan club sandwich. Mm, vegans are like so in. Is the salmon East Coast or West Coast? That'll just do a number on me. I can come back Maybe later. Crab cakes. I had crab cakes. <clears throat> Sir? Porterhouse, medium, rare, slaw, cob, ranch, blue, fries, baked, toppings, all of them. Oh, here's something coconut dipped shrimp saute with pilaf. I like pilaf. V-Rod. Claim yours before they're gone. I'm a regular guy, but sometimes I can be such a dunce. Like when I go on vacation. I always wonder if I'm paying too much for the rental car. Then I heard about the Dollar Rent-A-Car website at dollar.com. The rates were so good, I couldn't contain my excitement. Saving money was so quick and easy, and wow, my Dollar Rental car was right at the airport. Next time, you know where to go. In the America East Conference, Boston University has home court advantage throughout the semi tonight against Northeastern. They get a jumper here from Billy Collins. They will now take on the Vermont Hartford winner in Boston Saturday morning on ESPN, guys. Thank you, Chris Fowler, here on Monday evening. Jimmy Dykes just came out of a Bruce Weber huddle. Jimmy, what's going on over there? I tell you what, the coach didn't talk about plays. He didn't talk about anything with this. He said, guys, we've come too far to have an effort like this. If you don't start playing with the effort that I know you can play with, win or lose, we're going to practice in the morning. This is not an acceptable effort out of you guys. He was awfully strong with him, Bob. Well, as he should be. They beat Illinois State by 12 Saturday. Southwest Missouri State by nine yesterday and a game that was closer than that as Barry Hinson's Bears hung up till the last couple minutes. Tonight, they were left at the gate by Creighton and they've hit five out of 28 shots. Williams for Warren. A bad looking banking jumper missing. Larry House with a Creighton rebound. Running down to the two minute mark. And that's an offensive foul as Nate Funk got an elbow into the face of Kent Williams. How about that? You will practice in the morning. Mm. And that would be probably after a rather quiet ride back to Carbondale tonight, two hours to the east of here. I go back to my point about Southern Illinois playing like they, they have to win this game. They're playing a little timid, a little shy. They got to put that behind them and think, you know what, we're in. We're going to finish this thing off tonight. And they have not played. They played on their heels and not their toes. Kyle Corver is the man denying Jermaine Dearman right now. Somebody else has to hit a shot. Darren Brooks can't. And the SIU nightmare continues. Here's McKinney for House. Well, he's got a quick trigger, and Larry House with a three. 40 to 14 break. And a steal. It's the House coming down again. 
Double figures for him. Did Bruce Weber just call his fourth timeout of the first half? A lot of one-on-one -on -one by Southern Illinois in the half court. You've got a screen. You've got to get your teammate open. You can't come back going one-on-one. -on -one. German gets his pocket picked, and House just sends it home. Look at that right there. Just rip it and run. He's the most athletic guy House is on a pretty average athletic team. An important kid because of it. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps in the studio with our 7-Up halftime report. More troubles for Jim Herrick at Georgia with a suspension taking place now. A couple of more teams are in the big dance. And there were some coaching changes today. And not a great day for minority coaches in college basketball at that. That's all coming up at halftime with Chris and Digger. 42-14 Creighton, a minute 10 to go. Five out of 30 are the Saluki shooting the basketball. Zero of eight from three-point range. Creighton with an 8-0 run here. Well, Creighton's just taking away every passing lane. They're running through every screen. For some tough shots out of the Salukis. There's another one. Yep, Ben Williams on the miss. He's now two out of eight. Corver. Now Corver has only taken two shots in this half. He has a field goal and a couple of free throws. He'll drive it to the baseline and force one. That may be the worst shot we've seen him take this year. Horn in transition. And some contact from Creighton's Tyler McKinney. Well, tomorrow night, Championship Week, presented by 7-Up Continues. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Butler. That's the Horizon League comes your way. At 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN tomorrow. Log on to ESPN.com. That's something you can do 24 hours a day. Get up to date on who's in the dance and who's on the verge. Or as my partner would say, who's at the gate trying to get on that plane? On standby. I think this is going to be a good year for the mid-majors. Clubs like College of Charleston, Central Michigan, Butler, Weaver State out in the big sky, Western Kentucky. I, I think the CSI, I think the Common Sense Index is going to come into play more this year than it ever has. Less RPI, more CSI. Final 20 seconds of a first half shocker in St. Louis. Not clock off. Bring them in. Oh, they've done anything they want to do, haven't they, in this first half? They've gotten shots from anywhere they want to shoot them. They've stripped them defensively, cleaned up rebounds. They've played with the energy that Dana Altman's club had early in this season. Joe Dabber checks out, or rather in. Kyle Corver will sit down. As Dana Altman gets some size out there on defense, Bruce Weber Salukis have less than four seconds to go 94 feet. Horn. Now they call a timeout on a ball thrown to midcourt. And for the sake of a basket, at the end of the first half, Southern Illinois has just used their final timeout. Mm. You and I have been doing a lot of games. I don't know if I've ever seen a coach out of timeouts before halftime. Championship week continues tonight, midnight Eastern. As we check in on the WCC, number two, San Diego, number one, Gonzaga. Ah, those Zags are always worth staying up late for, and we'll see them in action tonight. As Jimmy said, though, San Diego on their home floor, they've got other ideas. We like Gonzaga. Their RPI is uh, 38 right now. Their club, I know they've uh, had a few stumbles this year, but you watch their bigs play, and their style of play is a headache. Just like Creighton's style of play is a headache. 
You're not going to have 10 or 12 game films and a couple of years worth of experience to defend Creighton in the NCAA tournament. That's what got him a win last year. You've got three or four days and two or three game films to break down. And they are not an easy club to break down. That was a full timeout because Bruce Weber was out of 30s. And now they've got 2.3 seconds to go. Try to get a basket and add to that 16% shooting step. No one could have projected this. I'm telling you what, these two clubs can play. Brad Korn barely nicking iron. And they use their final timeout. It goes for naught. Larry House leads the way for Creighton as eight Creighton players make it nine now score. And Chris Fowler, we are sitting shaking our heads in St. Louis right now. Well, Bob and Jimmy, as we welcome you to these seven up half summer floor, we're sitting here pretty stunned in Bristol, Connecticut as well. I mean, Southern 24 wins and a pretty impressive resume, but fellas, the committee is watching. It's not a good time to play your worst half of the year. That was awful, Digger. Yeah, they, they better make some serious adjustments to try to get back in this game. But Chris, when you come out and go two for 19 to start the game, and I thought it would be crazy to be in problem because when you just have one point wins back to back, you lose a lot of energy and you worry about your team coming out <laughs> being flat. Uh, uh The other team was flat and it's hard to believe. As Jimmy said, the Salukis can play, but there's just no evidence of it so far. A couple more tickets have already been punched to the NCAA tournament tonight. We'll have highlights and scores plus more in the Georgia saga coming up. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7UP, is brought to you by NikeBasketball.com and Kia and the all-new Sorento SUV. Kia, make every mile count. Thanks. Instinct. Welcome back to the 7-Up Halftime Report. At Georgia, allegations first made by Tony Cole have become findings in an internal investigation into academic fraud. And so the Bulldogs have taken themselves out of consideration for the NCAA tournament. Therefore, they can't compete in the SEC tournament as well. Their season is over. Now, Jim Herrick Sr., the head coach, has not specifically been fingered, but he has been suspended with pay. A.D. Vince Dooley explains. Coach Herrick uh, has uh, the ultimate responsibility of his program. We're not talking about allegations. We're talking about findings of the most serious nature. And because of that, I thought it was appropriate to recommend that Coach Herrick uh, be suspended with pay. 
uh, from his employment with the University of Georgia pending further investigation. So the players at Georgia pay the price. Tennessee's team benefits the bracket in the SEC tournament redone. The Volunteers will get a bye to play Auburn, and the rest of the pairings have had to be reworked with Georgia out of the mix. Well, the kids that losing this more than anybody else besides Georgia. It's the guys who weren't a part of this investigation. When you look at Jarvis Hayes and company, Ezra Williams, the senior, these are the people that lose. And boy, Chris, you got to ask a question. Where's the dean that approves a course for anybody to take? And I don't understand the concept of what's going on academically at the University of Georgia. When an assistant coach teaches a class that has players in it, that's the kind of thing that uh, could lead to trouble, certainly. So, Georgia falling out of the NCAA field means that one team that would not have gotten in will get an at-large bid. As for the automatic bids at stake tonight in the Metro Atlantic, Fairfield took on Manhattan, and the Jaspers have just been the class of this league all season long, knocked off St. John's early, really kind of dominated this league and dominated the early part of this game against Fairfield. Kenny Miner knocked one down. Dave Holmes goes in down low. You can see the Jaspers jumping on the stag. Would make a couple of runs and keep it close, but then Jared Johnson drains the triple. It's back up to 12. Luis Flores, who played 50 minutes in a double OT win in the semis, came back tonight. The tank wasn't exactly full, but a good effort. Jason Wingate drives. Dishes it off there, and the Jaspers go into the tournament, wins by 15. I really think Manhattan did a good job of playing up tempo and pressuring, forcing shots by Fearful when they shoot 33%. They're not going to win. But Manhattan is 16 and 4 in non home games this year. That's the best in the nation. And Flores coming off that 50 minute effort last night, a gutsy double double. In the Colonials, UNC Wilmington trying to repeat against Drexel and Joel Justice knocking down deep shots. Then on the scramble, Anthony Terrell misses, but Craig Callahan, one of those senior co-captains there for the follow, and Wilmington builds a 16-point lead. Kenny Sanchez knocks it down for the wing. It's down to nine. Drexel and Bruiser Flint making a run, but there is Brent Blizzard, the three-point marksman, deep shot from the wing. Blizzard again, and Wilmington goes back to the field of 65. It's the team that knocked off Southern California in the first round and scared Indiana in the second round last year. Well, they got out early with 18 to four in fast break points in the first half. That's the pace of the game they wanted. They forced Drexel just to shoot on the run. Drexel ends up shooting 29%, going seven for 24 on threes. That was the difference in the game. Now to the mid-continent as we check the teams that have made bids here already in the tournament. It's now up to seven and counting. Remember UNC, Asheville with the losing record, a very likely to put them in that play-in game. Valpo's trying to get back into the field. Semis against Missouri, Kansas City. Miguel Ali for deal in the lane. Then the pass laying it in, and Reitus Groff knocks the triple. This is kind of the United Nations roster for Scott Drew, Homer's son in his first year. Coach. Hey, this is a dangerous team. They only lost to Notre Dame by two in Chicago on a neutral site, so they're on a mission not just to win this game, but to win the conference tournament and get back to the NCAA tournament. They've won eight out of nine. They move into the final tomorrow on ESPN against the winner of Southern Utah and IUPUI approaching halftime. And it's an eight-point ball game at this point. In the Sun Belt, Western Kentucky and New Mexico State. Patrick Sparks knocks down the triple. Western out early. Jamal Brown gets the pass, lays it in, and Hilltoppers on their home court, leading the Aggies throughout most of this game. Nate Williams lays it in on the break, and then Anthony Winchester off the screen, knocks down the triple. Hilltoppers bring a 10-game winning streak into this game. They lead it by eight at the break as Mexico State made a run. Middle Tennessee State awaits in the final. Like Western Kentucky, the way they run their offense. Very patient, look for good shots, a lot of balance, and they're playing solid defense in the first half. And we'll come back. We've got some more scores, and we'll also preview the midnight game coming up next. Halftime Report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. The key to outdoor advertising, location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors at a ski resort. Ooh. Now that's a billboard with stopping power.
60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. Paying too much for shipping? Priority mail service is dependable delivery starting at just $385. Maybe that's why we deliver more business packages than any two-day service. Priority mail from the United States Postal Service. On March 12th, Intel will not only change how you work, but where you work. Metamorphosis, a mark of Motomorphosis, the physical or digital adaptation of one device into another. Change is constant. Switch, swap, switch, swap. Hello, Moto. It's time to dance. Well, the time has finally come for us to see who's number one. Get out on the floor. It's all right to dance. We gon' crown the champion right here on ESPN. Atlantic 10, George Washington and LaSalle advance to the quarters. And in a battle of former digger assistants, knee over Barron, Rhode Island advances to take on Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to mention that. Midnight Eastern Time, Gonzaga at San Diego. It's on San Diego's home court for the championship of the West Coast Conference. Zags with 23 wins coming in. Some debate about whether they need to win, get the automatic bid, or they have a good at-large chance. I think they're a good at-large chance, Chris, because I'll tell you, Mark Few did a great job early in the year. He played against people that are tougher than anybody in that conference. You look at his schedule, it was four wins, and look at his four losses, and that to me gives them the strength for their RPI to be solid. And when you look at what Blake Stepp brings to the table, being a great scorer, Corey Violet, Mark Few's team is as good as anybody as an at-large. I think they're going to get in. That was a three-point game. The Torero is playing the Zags very tough. The last regular season meeting in San Diego, midnight Eastern time. Coaching casualties beginning to pile up. Ricky Stokes fired today by Virginia Tech, which misses the Big East Tournament for a third consecutive year. Paul Graham fired at Washington State, and Armand Hill let go by Columbia. Second half of the MVC in St. Louis when you come back. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Focus SVT. While its performance tuned suspension led car and driver to say it is simply in a handling class all by itself, its power is creating a commotion all its own. Ford Focus SVT. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Our big leader is Carl Senegrin, a bouncer from Saskatchewan. His hobbies are eating and lighting firecrackers. And it says here, Carl, you're looking forward to the seventh grade. You're going to be a teacher? No, a uh, student, Alex. You mean you're not even in high school yet? Uh, what is no? But I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Let's get some harder questions here, huh, Alex? <laughs> <clears throat> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. 
Then get set and go to Nebraska Furniture Mart. Pay zero interest for 18 months. months. And zero down on anything in the store, $2.99 or more. All leather furniture and mattresses are on sale. All DuPont Steam Master Extra Life and Ultra Life carpet is on sale. All refrigerators, washers, and dryers are on sale. Shop now and pay zero interest for 18, 18 months. months. Plus, all TVs, home theater systems, and computers are on sale. These are all on sale, too. Pay zero interest for 18, 18 months. months. Only at Nebraska Furniture Mart. The attorneys of Hoffman O'Brien, Wolf, and Lathrop have been awarded the highest ratings by their peers, according to the nation's most respected resource for the legal profession. Unparalleled performance in the trenches, superior technical resources, and exceptional support staff, all trained in personal injury. Experience, teamwork, and commitment to their clients. Personal injury is all they do, and no one does it better. Make your first call to Hoffman O'Brien, Wolf, and Lathrop, your only choice. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7UP, is brought to you by Ford. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. And Hershey's Milk and Milkshakes, intensely chocolate, intensely Hershey's. A Saluki is the oldest pure breed in the world known for its speed and hunting skills. The Frisbee dog did a little better than the Salukis <laughs> did in the first half tonight. 42-16, Creighton, you got a feel for Bruce Weber's club. Coming out and playing a dreadful first half. So, partner, what do they have to do here quickly? Well, you've got to find a way to get aggressive right off the bat in the first three or four minutes. So this thing is completely out of hand. I know from a coaching standpoint, Bob, that Southern Illinois staff is probably questioning everything they did leading up to this game. Did we put too much emphasis on us? They told us today they've talked about this game all season long. We want to play in the conference tournament championship game. So right now, from a coaching standpoint, you're thinking, did we put too much emphasis on it? Did we not do enough in the shoot around? Did we do too much? Did we eat at the wrong time? Everything is going through the mind right now of that Saluki staff. They shot five out of 32, 0 for 9 three-point range. But it's their not, not their worst first half of the year, not even in this building. They only scored 13 against the Billigans back on December 28th, a game they eventually lost 71-60. So they did have a big second half. They need a mammoth second half in this one. First possession for Creek. Ball lost in the hands of Larry House, who had a 5 for 10 first half. He's the one guy that will hunt shots, though, on that Creighton squad. And that's not a good thing. Williams dishing. Willis didn't know whether he wanted to finish or to pass it off to Dearman, and then he landed in travel. Well, our star watch, and really it's two different stories. Corver's four, helpful to Creighton. Williams four, not so to SIU. Yeah, the seven rebounds of Corver, he's trying to make a cut off. Oh, nice passes. How pretty was that? Lindem in the back cut, and then he's got Brody Darren, the trailer, right down the lane. Gorgeous. When Chris and Digger are right, this is not the kind of night you want to have if you're Southern Illinois, knowing that all eyes are upon you. Yes, you're the regular season champ. Yes, you went to the Sweet 16 last year. You've won as many games in college basketball as anyone in the country the last two. But you cannot have a dreadful performance like tonight and not have to really hold your breath on Selection Sunday. Stetson, here's Stitt, first basket of the night. But again, I think the common sense will wear out. That selection committee knows that it's not all about one game. This club has proven themselves over the last three or four or five months. Cody Darren kicking for house. Shot clock inside 10. We cut off that high post. That's uh, that Iowa State offense that Johnny Orr used to run to perfection. Lindem in the miss and Willis the SIU rebound. Down to Dearman. They need a lot more of that, but he can't finish. Jermaine had a good look. And Jermaine Dearman now from the floor. Two for eight tonight. And then Lindemann slips loose down low. If you turn and watch the ball against Creighton, put two points on the board because they'll shoot a layup on you. They slip that screen as well as anyone I've seen this year. Little mid-range jumper, Darren Brooks. 
That may be the first time tonight they've scored in back-to-back -back possessions. Eddie Darren setting a pick. McKinney for House. Three ball. And it's going to be impossible for SIU if Creighton keeps executing like this. Kirsten for two. And he's got two in a row. Three consecutive possessions with the basket for Southern Illinois, but can they stop anybody? I'm going to talk a lot about Tyler McKinney for Creighton, starting point guard. They are 45 and 8 with him as a starter. Cody Darren, yes, and a foul. Well, I talked about uh, Southern Illinois ball watching and uh, giving up a basket against Creighton. You see again, just Brody Darren ducking that shoulder, and getting right to the front of the rim. But then two possessions ago, the ball watch that I'm talking about, watch right here. Watch Kent Williams making a mistake. When his eyes turn towards Kyle Corver, watch the cut and the layup off of it. Watch his head turn. Right there, boom, slip to the basket, two points. You've got to keep that ball, you man relationship at all times. What I mean by that is see the ball, see your man, and always see them both at the same time. Even up in this free throw, Creighton gets it back. Cody Darren stripped of it. Lindemann right back to him. Good steal by Turner and then Darren Hexen. Cody Darren with his first foul of the night. Joe Dabbert back for the Blue Jays. Nate Funk will follow him. As Lindemann gets a breather. Right behind Brody Darren. Here's Hairston. Finger roll. Suddenly he's hot. A half dozen for the sophomore. Fairview Heights, Illinois, right across the river. Bellfield East High School. Well, they run their offense high, don't they? Look at that right now. All five guys above the free throw line extended. And again, that's what triggers all their backdoor cuts, all their offensive rebounding. Corver skips it over for Funk. They ran some good stuff there. They just didn't finish. Warren the trailer. Shovels. Out of the hands of Josh Warren. Straight ahead. And that is D'Anthony Bowden with the transition hoop. They're not afraid to pitch it ahead, are they? Get a runner out on the wing and they'll throw it to you. Keep in mind that Creighton embarks on another run. Bruce Weber cannot stop the clock. This is Brooks in traffic, and he draws a foul. Looks like to Anthony Bowden. That will be his third. We're five minutes out of halftime. 53-24, it's all Blue Jays. The NCAA Women's Championship Selection Special, Sunday at 5 on ESPN. Ford Explorer is alone at the top. It has outstanding handling and the roomiest third row seat in its class which are just a couple of the reasons it's the best-selling SUV on the planet. Ford Explorer. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. This is Labatt Blue, the clean, crisp lager imported daily from Canada. Its refreshing, honest taste comes from a... Sorry! Oh, my bad, my bad. I got carried away a little. Uh, we're gonna need another blue over here. This one's spilled. Can we get another blue, please? Cold, like this one.
100th anniversary V-Rod. Claim yours before they're gone. How fast does Eclipse Flash freshen my breath? You want to see it again? Introducing Eclipse Flash. Whoa. Finally, a breath strip that tastes good. Bulk t-shirt, $18. Spider-Man watch, $20. Men in black alien attack sunglasses, $16. Hearing your dad scream like your little sister, priceless. There are some things money can't buy, for everything else, there's MasterCard. For special vacation offers, go to UniversalOrlando.com. Atlanta 10 quarterfinals are set. George Washington, LaSalle, and Rhode Island advancing. Next up for the Rams, Dayton. The championship game from Dayton, Saturday night on ESPN. Bob, Jimmy. Thank you, bracketologist Chris Fowler, Bob Carpenter, Jimmy Dykes here in St. Louis. SIU comes out, it's four out of five shots out at halftime. Showing some continuity at the offensive end final. Xavier in the A-10, if I had to pick a player of the year, which is hard to judge because guys have different roles or surrounded by different kind of players, but David West from Xavier would certainly be on that list. He's got great hands, he can put it on the floor. He's averaging a double-double. I mean, he is a warrior, and that's what Bruce Weber needs right now, a warrior. Look at those droughts in one game. Yeah, that's over 13 minutes without a basket. Ken Williams, five points on the night. Well, you and Tim McCormick agree. I heard him on ESPN Radio yeah. yesterday pumping David West as his National Player of the Year. Can't go wrong with that guy. He and Soto, great combination. Yes, they are. And the Chalmers and Diedrich Finn, uh, Pat and Monica put two point guards, two very good point guards on the floor at the same time. They are as tough a out as anyone right now in college basketball. Creighton has a counter to everything you do defensively. You overplay the backdoor cut, you take something away, they'll reverse the ball on you. Looked like Kyle Corver really forced that ball into the post, but then they get a foul as Josh Warren was reaching. Corver's a terrific passer. He's got quick hands, even as a shooter and as a passer. That thing's not in, it doesn't get stuck at all. Oh, great in the pass. They found Larry House, and that's 16 for him. He had 14 against the Salukis when they played in Omaha back on January 18th. See how effective they are. That's three guys off the pinch post in that one possession. That Curtis pass was kicked by Warren. Southern Illinois brings Brian Turner back into the game, one of their defensive guys. They need some ball pressure right now. Stetson Hairston, who hit three shots in a row, gets a breather. Jermaine Dearman coming back in, suffering through a two-for-eight night with four points and five boards. And far too few touches in the lane. Brad Korn sits down. Bob, it's a long time until Southern Illinois gets a chance to play a basketball game again. You know, a long 9, 10, 11 day layoff, whatever it's going to be. They've got to do something this next 14 minutes to get their confidence back about what they accomplished the last four months. Brian Turner unable to hit. Dearman, good rebound. Waiting, can't score. Tyler McKinney with the loose ball. House on top, Corver. Four defenders, one of them went over press row. And the basket as Blake shown when tumbling over the Creighton radio crew. Good hustle by Schoen. Now that's the kind of uh, fight that Bruce Weber's looking for right there. Boom. And uh, after his guy gives it up, goes right to the rim. No one's guarding me. Yeah, Easy guess, two points. Yeah, guess who found him? Kyle Corbin. Yep. Here's Ken Williams. Squaring up, along with it. Tough shooting night for him. It'll be either Warren or shown over the back with an SIU foul. 
You see those assists piling up for Creighton. That's a characteristic of them all season long. They average 19 assists a ball game and 29 makes. So only 10 times a game are they doing something outside of their offense. Seven minutes out of halftime. Creighton on top by 31. They led at the half, 42-16. Corver, what a pass. Grimes knocks it in. Dio Corver racking up the assist now. That's five on the night. At the other end, a three for Darren Brooks. We got some offense going at both ends now. Corver is so much more than just a three-point shooter. He averages about three or four and makes a game from out there, but he chews you up as a passer. He's a terrific defender. When they go to their 2-2-1 press, he actually triggers that thing. Great trap guy. Look at that pass. And it's rolled in by Mike Grimes. He plays the game, Bob, one pass ahead of everybody else. Yep. 61-29. Unbelievable. Brooks underneath. And he stepped out of bounds, evidently. And Brooks gets the steal. Local kid out of Jennings High School and a big defensive play there. Rubber Holland, get up, get up into him. And he's tired of watching his club play from their heels. And he wants to see some guys at least fouling hard, making something happen. Funk with an air ball. Deerman straight ahead. He finds Williams. Can't Williams in transition. And a timeout as Dana Altman, not that concerned about the score, but he doesn't like the trend of what he's seen the last two minutes. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues. The Horizon League Championship tomorrow at 7 Eastern. We'll match up Wisconsin-Milwaukee for you against Butler. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Full timeout here in St. Lou. 11.33 to go. It's all Creighton, but SIU showing some signs of life. Tonight on SportsCenter, Herrick pays the price, but George's is worse. Bob Knight doesn't live up to his price. The plot thickens for MJ and the Wiz, and KG faces the streaking Mavs. SportsCenter follows the game on ESPN. The biggest rivalries. Superhuman strength. It's about to get very cold in here. Big time college hoops action, and the biggest action movie of the year. X-Men 2 launches May 2nd, and college basketball all season long on ESPN. What if you could plan the perfect escape? You'd have to be able to go anywhere at a moment's notice. You'd have to have more than enough room to operate in. And of course, you'd need to make a smooth getaway. Nothing can be equipped with more ways to escape than Ford Escape. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Smart move, Dave. Consolidated with Dell Power Edge servers. Uh -huh. Highly available, highly scalable. Intel Xeon processors. Cuts costs across the board. So you're not gonna miss those old servers, right? Oh, Tony. What did you do with the old servers? Nothing. That's our drinking fountain, isn't it? You mean Hydra? Find out how you can cut costs across your enterprise. Easy as Dell. Call or go online today. The key to outdoor advertising, location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors, at a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power. Ooh. How fast is a clip slash fresh in my breath? You wanna see it again? Introducing Eclipse Flash. Whoa. Finally, a breath strip that tastes good. Best name for a tournament we can think of, Arch Madness here in St. Louis. Carpenter and Dykes at the Missouri Valley. I really think this is the best run mid-major tournament in the country. 
when you're talking about a place that has found a neutral site that has worked so well, Jimmy, for the rest of the league. I mean, there is not a Valley team in St. Louis. What a venue. Yeah, they promoted well, and it's interesting. I saw with Dana Altman today about, you know, the, the mid-major label. You know, here's the difference, folks, back home. They don't play Division I football. So why should a football team affect anything that goes on on a basketball court? There's nothing mid-major about Creighton. I can promise you that. We're still in Illinois. Mike Grimes blocking the shot of Jermaine Dearman. Southern Illinois, a bit of a run right here, 7-2. Could have been 9-2 there. There's that little handoff and a foul as SIU tries to stay with him. Now the under 12 minute media timeout. Well, the time has finally come for us to see who's number one. It's all right to dance. We gon' crown the champion right here on ESPN. BMW 3 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. On Selection Sunday, the choice is ESPN. At 5, we're first and exclusive with the NCAA Women's Bracket, plus live interviews with teams around the country. At 6, Sports Center brings you the Men's Bracket with expert analysis plus all the sports news of the day. Then at 7, Hoops as a second language. Gypsy do Dunkaroo, and you gotta have the stars, the PTPers, baby. As professors Chris Digger and Dickie V teach Bracketology 101, presented by Staples. If you're filling out a bracket on Selection Sunday, start here. Time to start another awesome day. If there's some place you want to be, better get moving. There's a whole new world of technology out there, and it's smart to stay health-minded. Or maybe your head's in the clouds. Take some time with friends. That's important, too. The Reavers are in action tonight, and the Arts Center has some special entertainment. It's just another day. But when every day has new potential, it's great to be a part of it. So till tomorrow. Iowa Western, where your tomorrows look better than ever. He did it. He did it. He did it. If Tim O'Neill Chevrolet can't beat your deal on a new Chevy, I'll give you 500 bucks. That's right. Tim O'Neill is out to sell you your next car, truck, or SUV like a new 2003 Chevy Malibu. Dad has more than 30 in stock, starting as low as 13496 I looked for the best deal and got it at Tim O'Neill. Our lots are full of the latest and greatest Chevrolets with great financing, super service, and unbeatable deals. If you buy a car anywhere else, you'll pay too much or I'll give you 500 bucks. Tim O'Neill Chevrolet, Lake Manawa Exit, Council Bluff, Chevrolet. We'll be. Sunbelt semis, it's getting a little rugged. This is Western Kentucky and New Mexico State. Watch Mike Wells. He'll go up and under. Whacked in the head. Keep a close eye. He will score. Wells cut badly, donating some blood, but getting closer to the finals of the conference tournament, guys. Hey, Chris, it's championship week. You give whatever it takes to get through and to get into that big dance. Looks like Creighton well on their way. Dominant tonight. Bob, here's his pinch post. If this defender right here gets outside the shoulders at all in either direction, then this offensive guy, that's what he's reading right now. How are you going to guard me? If you play me straight up, then we'll just run the pinch post. I'll look for my cutters coming off. But you better guard that thing honestly, or that post man will quickly whip into that middle and get an easy two points on you. Hairston on that foul a moment ago. Corver double teamed immediately. Pass into the post, a reach by Sylvester Willis. That will be his second foul. Talking about Western Kentucky out of that last commercial break, and that's that's a club. Uh, see the points in the paint tonight for the Jays continuing to pile up. But Dennis Felton's club is good. And I'm just going to have a, a real interesting time thinking about it. if you take a club like NC State, who's 9-7 and seven in the ACC. They, they, their only quality win, Bob, was at home against Duke. And we've seen now Duke is vulnerable on the road. So are you going to reward a club like NC State because they're at affiliation with the ACC if a Western Kentucky happens to get beat in their conference tournament? I don't agree with it if it happens. Well, we were told last week 
But there's no formula out there that X League is entitled to X number of teams right. in the NCAA. Right. We'll see if they mean it come Sunday. We've already seen a little reneging on the 500 in your conference idea. Kyle Corver with a three, picking his spots beautifully. And for Kyle, only seven points tonight. But that's in the so what department. Yeah. If you're a great Blue Jay fan, everybody has chipped in this one. I think he's got about seven rebounds and seven or eight assists. And he just beats you in a number of ways. Well, how about nine rebounds and six assists? That's pretty go. good numbers. Yeah. He may get a double double tonight. Corver raises his hand, says the foul's on me. It's only his second. Kyle Corver does have five double doubles this year and nine in his career. And, and again, when you walk in the gym, you look at Creighton and their shoot around, you think, you know what? Well, let's go shirts and skins right now, me, you, and a couple other guys, and take this team on. But then you start playing them, and they just execute you for 40 minutes on both ends of the floor. They're led by that guy. But you don't win 28 ball games with just one guy. They've got a, 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 a general on the sidelines that just triggers everything. And then role players around Corver, they know exactly what they're supposed to do, and they do it nine times out of ten. Ken Williams open in the corner. Just wouldn't go for him. Brad Horn keeping it alive for Southern Illinois. Kirsten for three. Their three-point shooting atrocious tonight. One for 12. Overall, 12 out of 47. Well, they cut with a purpose now. When they decide to go from point A to point B, boom, they go. They're not wasting time doing it either. Here's Grimes. Putting it on the floor. Hitting back iron there. Josh Warren with the SIU rebound. Williams angles it. Tough pass. Nicely done. Darren Brooks the finish. McKinney got a little fancy on the break there. Williams down to Warren. Some contact before the pass got there. Looked like Grimes was defending him. That's how good Creighton's been tonight, partner. SIU got a nice basket there a moment ago to trim the lead to 29. <laughs> that's, that's never good, is it? Again, Dane Altman told me uh, yesterday, I talked with him for about 30 minutes in the locker room prior to a semifinal game. He said, we are just so tired. You know, every time we step on the floor, the national attention has been there all year. We know our highlights are going to be on ESPN. The, the floor gets stormed when we do lose. He said it has really worn us down. The first time for me to go through it and my kids to go through it. And he'd do it all over again next year. Yep. He said he would give his troops three days off, regardless of the outcome of this game tonight, to get away from basketball, focus on school, and then come back. And I think that's a great move. Yeah. They had two days off at Christmas. They're going to take three days off starting tomorrow. How about the win total this guy's racked up? 22 and 99, 23 and 00. 24 and 01, 23 last year, 28 and counting this year. Finally, the three ball goes down for Kent Williams. The first one he's knocked down tonight in five attempts, and it's 64 38. This one's going back the other way on the heels of that three. A foul on DeAnthony Bowden of Creighton. The under eight minute timeout, Bruce Weber. Long way to go. The key to outdoor advertising, location. So I put my seven up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors at a ski resort. Ooh. Now that's a billboard with stopping power. Doctors recommend elevating your heart rate at least 30 minutes a day. Here's to your health. The BMW 3 Series. The ultimate driving machine.
How fast is a clip slash fresh in my breath? You want to see it again? Introducing Eclipse Flash. Whoa. Finally, a breath strip that tastes good. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by the BMW 5 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. There's got to be a karaoke bar somewhere we can ship those guys off to. 7.55 to go in the Missouri Valley Championship game. It's all great. 64-38. Lots of men's action tonight. How about the women tomorrow night? We'll check in on the Big East. Number one, UConn. How dominant, how great have they been? They take on 18th-ranked Villanova in the Big East Women's Championship, presented by State Farm, 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. LSU, Tennessee, just a couple of squads will be trying to chase down the Yukon Huskies here in a couple of weeks. That's a tough chore. Eight minutes to go here. And a dominating Creighton performance. Jermaine Dearman on the bench. Hitting with Brooks, one out of every three field goals. Dearman tonight, two of ten. North Creighton has really communicated well. When they switch, they're loud and calling it out. They don't get caught by surprise. They've probably played about as well as they've played all year, Bob, in this ball game. Stetson Hairston traveling on a possession. And SIU was just forced to run some individual stuff out there. You know, I and mean, we really haven't seen Creighton's press at all, which is one of the real reasons why they've rattled off as many wins as they've had. That thing's tough to go against, and they haven't even had to use it. And I think the last thing they were expecting was a championship game when they would not expend as much energy as they did during the quarters or the semis. Lindemann gets manhandled by Brad Korn, who arrived a little late. All five guys that Dane Altman puts on the floor, even when he goes to his bench, they can all pass the ball. The ball doesn't get stuck in anyone's hands. That time it was Brody there in the five guy. Catch, boom, and quickly get rid of it. Dabbert can pass the ball. Funk, when he comes in off the bench, can pass the ball. Michael Lindemann. This guy kind of personifies what this team's all about. Scouting report on him, very few mistakes. Not a great athlete, knows the game, passer, hits open shots. I mean, just take about five or six Blue Jays and apply that to them. Well coached, they are. By Dana Altman. Williams underneath, Hairston, Stinson. Has put the hat on, he's had a good second half. His fourth field goal since halftime, after being shut out early. And then Ernest Turner, a mid-court foul. Bruce Weber thought McKinney had gone over and back on his dribble. Bob Carpenter and Jimmy Dykes at the Savas Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Longtime site now, the Missouri Valley Championship game. A tournament that this year sets all kinds of new attendance records for the Valley here in St. Louis. You know, Bob, if you're an athletic director watching this game and you think you might have an opening coming up here in the next uh, week or so or month, I think you might want to give Dana Altman a call. He hasn't told me anything, but I don't buy in the theory that he's completely sold in to staying at Creighton for the next 10 years. I think he deserves to be at a program that has a chance to go to the Final Four. Not that Creighton doesn't. But that guy right there does it the right way. 365 days a year. And he has proven himself. Well, and because of the great job he has, he doesn't have to jump at the first opportunity. And I know that's very difficult for coaches sometimes yep. to be careful, to be patient, wait for the right one. Brody Darren putting the ball on the floor, drawing a foul. And he's, uh, he's done it consistently. His club's right up there with the best of them in the country as far as most wins the last two seasons. Southern Illinois tied for second right behind Kansas. Creighton just one game back. Dane Altman has turned down some jobs the last couple of years because he's waiting for the one that he thinks he can go to the Final Four and get a chance to win the whole thing. He just wants a shot at it. All 
All right, Ukraine fans, just sit down now, just relax. <laughs> yeah. He's not going anywhere. Nope. 6.15 to go. Blue Jays by 26. Dearman. Well, he gets one down. Basket interference, but the shot went in anyway. And for Jermaine Dearman, only his third field goal of the night. Brody Darren leaves. Mike Grimes back for Creighton as Dana Altman continues that never-ending shuttle of players in and out. You play hard for three or four minutes, out you come, you get a breather. Ten guys getting between 12 and 31 minutes. Porver leads them in minutes played at 31 a game, but the rest of them know they're coming in, and when they do, they know their role. Yeah, Dana Altman is the Scotty Bowman of college basketball coaches. He's almost like a great hockey coach. Play a shift, get out, play a shift, get out. Funk for three. Underneath Grimes. Rejected by Dearman. Five and a half to go. Hairston for Dearman. Big first step. Jermaine Dearman. Eight points for him tonight. 66 44. Foul in the backcourt on Stetson Hairston. Creighton put so much pressure on the passer, especially in the first 20 minutes. I think that's had a big part of keeping Dearman out of this ball game tonight. We're going to check in on the Zags tonight after Sports Center. WCC, we're going to look to the West Coast Conference, San Diego and Gonzaga. Top two seeds in that tournament got through. Championship week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and on the Deuce. Nate Funk, normally a pretty good shooter. Creighton and Gonzaga both moving into new facilities next year. Boy, Creighton's a mega facility. We've got a 20-point game as Darren Brooks now has 11 points all in the second half. Kyle Corver, wow, what a pick. Blake Schoen ran into him and went down like he'd been punched. Kyle Corver, after the pick, drains the three. Goodness gracious. Whoever is guarding Kyle Corver. Blake Schoen needs to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with after this ball game. My goodness. He's still trying to shake it off. Number two in white guarding the ball right now. Nobody called out anything, did they? About to get it laid on him again. Timeout, Creighton. Bob, watch his pick. Creighton utilizes the guy in the backcourt to help free up the ball handler. Boom, right there. I mean, that's a shot. And that's a legal screen. Corver didn't move. He didn't lean in. Schoen just ran smooth over him. And whoever is defending Kyle Corver has got to be up and talking. Screen right, screen right, screen right. My goodness. Help your teammate out, huh? Versatile night for Kyle Corver, the senior from Ella, Iowa. Great passing. Cody Garrett on the tail end of that one. Kyle Corver tonight has six assists to go with his double-double of 10 points and 10 boards. A complete player. NBA scouts question his foot speed a little bit. They question his side-to-side -side quickness. But he has shown his ability to stay within an offense, to pass the ball. He can certainly stroke it as good as anyone out there. I'm not going to label him the best shooter in college basketball, but he's certainly right up there with whoever you want to throw in that group. He is an awfully good college basketball player. Maybe not a great pro, but he is a, has been a great collegiate basketball player. I'll tell you one thing, being a great pro is the last thing on his mind right now. Yep. There's an NCAA tournament bid to be had out there. Blue Jays have gone four years in a row. Running down to the four minute mark, shot clock at three, Larry House. Long rebound, Lindemann saved it. Blake Schoen and then Corver stepped in front of it. Here's an interesting note on the Missouri Valley Tournament. In the last 13 years, this is only the fourth time the numbers one and two seeds have made it to the championship game. So it doesn't happen often. Now, the recent trend is three of the last five that has happened. So we had about seven or eight years there when number one hardly ever met number two. Corn, a touch. Brooks, the follow. 13 for Darren Brooks. 69 50. Bobby 
again, I've, I've been on a sideline before where just everything goes wrong. And the first thing coaches will do, they'll, they'll question everything they did. Did they watch enough film? Did they not watch enough film? Did we put too much emphasis on the game? Not enough emphasis. Did we have too much of a walkthrough? I mean, they'll, they'll go through 35 questions tonight as a staff. And the bottom line is, we'll think, you know what? It, it, just, it just didn't happen for us. We were up against an excellent team in Creighton, and we just didn't get it done. Kyle Corver, 11 points on the night. You know, and sometimes you do everything right leading up to the game. Yeah. Some nights the kids just don't play for you. Some nights they're out of sync. I tell you, three coaches across the country that haven't been out of sync this year. If I had to pick a national coach of the year, it would be hard to pick one. Tubby Smith and what he did with his club after that Louisville loss is unbelievable. But certainly Skip Prosser at Wake Forest and Mike Montgomery have to be mentioned as well. Dana Altman doing a great one tonight. series BMW the ultimate driving machine on March 12th Intel will not only change how you work but where you work it's think big month at Sonning featuring our biggest burger ever the big cheese two beef patties three slices of smoky cheddar cheese topped with bacon and a special honey pepper sauce and made to order the big cheese only at Sonic you have you're beautiful and you're smart and you work so hard Billy would you like me to call your mom and see if you can stay for dinner if you insist. Introducing the Cinnameal Deal. Any large Pizza Hut pizza, America's favorite, with up to three toppings, just $11.99. Plus a generous order of our new freshly baked cinnamon sticks absolutely free. The $11.99 Cinnameal Deal. Spoil your family, not your budget. You're powerful, smart. Thank you. You're welcome. At Pizza Hut. If you're looking for real wood furniture at really good prices and you want a really nice finance offer to boot, you're in luck because Oak Express is having its Lucky Days 20-month no-interest savings event. So not only will you find incredible bargains like these, now through Tuesday, March 18th only, you'll also get no interest for 20 months. That's no interest until November 2004. Hurry in to make sure Oak Express's Lucky Days 20-month no-interest finance offer doesn't roll right past you. At Georgia, the developments continue, none of them positive. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reporting that Jarvis Hayes, one of the star Bulldog players, will bypass his senior year for the NBA. His twin brother Jonas, who's scheduled to graduate in August, says his future is also in doubt. Jarvis Hayes, bitter about the administration's decision to withdraw the team from the postseason, said, quote, they took it from us. They panicked. More on this story, reaction for the Bulldog players coming up on SportsCenter with Carl Ravitch and Dan Patrick. They'll also have... The story of this brawl in spring training, first inning, Brad Penny beams Guerrero. Fellas, it's an exhibition game. Relax. Bob, Jimmy. Oh, boy. Baseball is back. Thank you, Chris Fowler. And one layer of bad news after another at the University of Georgia. Here's Brooks for three. First shot, he's missed this half. 20 to go here at the Missouri Valley Championship game in St. Louis. Southern Illinois, almost four times better this half, but the hole way too deep to dig yourself out of when you're down at the half, 42-16. Creighton shoots right at 50% from the field as a team anyways, and the reason why, you don't see very many bad shots out of these guys over the course of the year. Uh, what a great feed. House to Grimes and a foul. Double figures for Mike Grimes. Well, I was going to break. I talked about National Coach of the Year. 
It's hard to, to put into words the pressure that Tubby Smith had on him after the loss at Louisville, and he goes back to work on that Monday morning and takes his team and just says, Guy, we're going forward. And they ran through that SEC. He's certainly mentionable as the National Coach of the Year. But Skip Cross, those guys are picked sixth in the ACC. They win the ACC by two games. Convince his kids that Duke and Maryland are not. They put their uniform on just like everybody else. And how about our guy Mike Montgomery out at Stanford? We've seen first game of the year for you and I. His club is picked seventh in the Pac-10, and they finished second by themselves. Those three guys, I think, as a group, should be your National Coach of the Year. I don't think you can single out one over the other. Yeah, Mike Montgomery does it without his point guard, Chris Hernandez. Yeah. Without all the players he's put in the NBA early, right, the last couple of years. Well, I've been on that Kentucky staff. It would have been so easy for Tubby to get sidetracked by all the... I'm sure he got letters talking about, you can't coach, you should have done this. Why are we second fiddle to Louisville? He just he ignored all that junk that he had to deal with in that state over that one ball game, rolled his sleeves up and went to work, man. I'm telling you what, if you're not a fan of Tubby Smith, you haven't been around that guy. He impressed me much, much more this year from what he did. Sports Center, next up, Dan Patrick, Carl Ravitch. And as we mentioned, and as Chris has documented for you, more bad news for UGA, University of Georgia, out of postseason play. We'll break down the brackets for you. And Kevin Garnett in the Big D tonight. Lindemann. Or Creighton with his ninth point of the night. A walk-on freshman two years ago. figures for Michael for the 11th time this year. 2.30 to go. 76-52. Dearman underneath creates a little separation. And for Jermaine Dearman, double figures. I'll tell you what, all Creighton has done tonight is solidified in everyone's mind that they're deserving of a high C. I'm talking about a, anywhere from a 3 to a 4 to a, a 5 at the worst case scenario for Dana Altman's squad. Southern Illinois, I think they're still in fine shape. They certainly are going to drop seed-wise from this loss tonight. And again, they're the regular season champion, back-to-back -back regular season champions. They've won 52 games over the last two years. There's been a little, lot of love between Bruce Weber and his kids. He was furious with them during that timeout that I listened to during the first half. But the love is still there, and this guy will pick this club up and get them ready for the NCAA tournament. It won't be an easy job, but he'll get it done. He said last year, after they lost the championship game to Creighton in this tournament, it was excruciating. He went recruiting, he tried to sleep, he tried to play with the kids. Nothing worked. He's got three daughters. They couldn't even distract him. All he could think about was, are we in? Are we in? Finally on Sunday, their name was on the board, and they made the most of it. We hope that happens again. I call again upon the CSI, and I'm talking about the crime show. The Common Sense Index has to tell you Southern Illinois won the Valley. They're the regular season champion. They finished ahead of Creighton against head-to-head -head competition. They've got to be in, in my opinion. Championship week presented by 7-Up. They're emptying the bench. Kyle Corver goes hopping over to shake hands with his coach. High fives for his teammates. Sports Center next. You'll see some Creighton highlights during that time, I'm sure. 78-54 Blue Jays. 90 seconds to go. And a shot missed by David Carney. A little U senior who just checked in. That ball deflected. Straight ahead, DeAnthony Bowden. Creighton is about to win their 29th game of the year. A school record. Draw them in the first round, you better go to work, folks. And I'm telling you, they're a whole lot better than what they look when they walk in the building. Don't Ooh. underestimate the guys that surround Kyle Corbett. Again, you can't win 29 ball games and have it all on one guy's shoulders. These guys know their role. They have a terrific system and a system that is not easy to prepare for, Bob, in three or four days, and that's all the notice you're going to have. Way short. Kellen Milner on that air ball. 30 seconds to go. SIU will be at 24 and 6 and holding. And the Creighton Blue Jays are a 
since now to go to their fifth consecutive NCAA tournament. Bruce Weber already walking down the court to shake hands with Dana Altman. We just wish, witnessed an old-fashioned rear kicking. With an exclamation point, it's Creighton winning the Missouri Valley Tournament and their fifth consecutive NCAA. This is the St. Louis version of what we see time after time in championship week. Dana Altman's Creighton Blue Jays win at 80-56. Sports Center is coming up next. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Bob Carpenter. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Log on to ESPN.com for more on championship week. The Creighton Blue Jays are on their way to the NCAA. We think SIU is as well. Good night from the Valley in St. Louis. This is SportsCenter. Jim Herrick stays, but his team goes down. A look at his success on the court and trouble off of it. Oh, several teams can now punch their ticket to the big dance. Two nimble seven-footers tango out west. So is there a generation gap in the nation's